Welcome, craft beer friends, to Season 8, Episode 4 of Tap to Craft Podcast. I am Denny Luce, coming to you from Boise, Idaho, and my partner in craft, the dog, Whisperer, and my favorite Florida man, also known as Drinking Eagle, from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Chris McKenzie. How are you doing today on this fine Labor Day weekend? And, of course, what are you drinking? I, I have to say I'm doing pretty good. I did labor today. Oh. Um, as most people did not. I did labor today, <laughs> but uh, hey, all in all, and I'm just happy to be back in here drinking beer, chatting with you. Uh, okay. And in my glass this evening, I'm having what's called the dark from Berry House Brewing Company. Okay. Um, and because my screen is green behind me, oh. it's yeah, Chris? picking up uh, <laughs> picking up some funny, funny colors. So this is a uh, Munich Dunkel um, from them clocking in at four whole percent mm. ABV. Um, and I've been really enjoying this one. I bought a four pack of this a couple of weeks ago and uh, I, I'm really happy that I did because it's super, super simple, very easy drinking beer. And uh, because, you know, the fall season coming up, I mean, the color on this thing, it's not called the dark for nothing. So yeah, nice. uh, pretty happy about this beer. But um, what about you, Denny? How's your day going? And uh, what's what's in your glass? That's going well. Uh, we just got back from Pocatello. We got back last night. Uh, we went, decided to spend a couple of nights with Haley and uh, just have some fun, drink some beer. Uh, we met up with some friends, and that was a fantastic uh, Saturday evening. In fact, we met up with them at, at 3 p.m. at Jim Dandy, and then we went to dinner afterwards, and we didn't get done, and I think it was like, it had to be 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I think it was almost 10 o'clock before we left. Wow. Uh, and we just, I'll tell you what, you, everyone knows that the last almost two years now has been, uh, at least 18 months has been a little bit stressful on everyone, you know, with the pandemic, having to stay at home and all that stuff and not really interacting with your friends and getting out and, and having fun. And sometimes that, you know, that, that stress and that, that builds up on you, but nothing is a better stress reliever than just laughing. Mm -hmm. laughing and having a good time and just letting loose. And I'll tell you what, Saturday night, um, I drank more and got loo got more loose than I have done in a long time. And it felt good. The next day, I got up and I just felt like free, right? I just felt like that laughter and everything just made me feel like a new man. And I'll tell you what, that's what I needed. I really needed that a lot. Good. So my weekend was really good. And today, I was able to do some housework, some yard work, and, and uh, rest a little bit and finish preparing the notes for today's show, uh, which is going to be fun, which we'll talk about here in just a minute about what content we'll be talking about. But what's in my glass? I'm drinking a local beer, starting this, uh, this show off with one from Mad Swede. This is a Hemingleva, and this is a hazy pale ale, and this is a gluten-reduced um, pale ale as well. So it's, it is hazy. You can see that uh, it's definitely not clear pale ale. And this is uh, my, my buddy Corey's favorite beer. And so I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go. I had a six pack of this. I'm going to go ahead and have one tonight to start off our show, our Labor Day show with. So, so there, we're both drinking local beers. Mm -hmm. That's good, right? Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, you ready to get this show started? Yeah. Yeah, I had to, I had to grab okay. myself a little bit of a lighter <laughs> one. <laughs> Just because uh, I had myself a uh, nimble giant with dinner, so oh yeah, I figured as much yeah. drinking as we're going to be doing, we got to go maybe a little higher and then work our way down, and then maybe we'll meet in the middle somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I I, um, I was drinking before as well, but I I, I just told myself for the show I'm only going to have three beers. There's one I have now, and the two uh, tasting beers that we'll be okay, doing that's here. That's fair. Because yeah, those are 16 ounce cans too, so it's not like um you know, ch chinsing out with like 12 ounce cans. Yeah. Those sissy 12 ounce cans. Yeah. With the big 16 <laughs> ounce cans. Eric Gromley says, cheers guys. How are you, sir? Thanks for checking oh. in with us. Cheers. <clears throat> cheers, Eric. I don't know. M Manny might be hogging all your bandwidth because you keep cutting in and out a little bit. Uh, Did I? Yeah. I don't know if the guys on Facebook are having the problem or if it's just me, maybe Sarah's streaming too much, uh, YouTube downstairs. Yeah. Normally <laughs> when we have uh, lagging issues, I see it on my end too. Um, mm. we'll take a quick, uh, that's take, okay. Just let quick take. Eric, let us know if you, if you saw, uh, Chris stutter a little bit just a minute ago, but we'll, yeah, we'll but move I, on. I stutter when I talk anyway. 
<laughs> All right, but before we get too far into the show, I always want to let anyone new listen to the show, what Tap to Craft podcast is all about. We are an educational podcast. We focus around celebrating all things craft beer because we want to assist you, our listeners, along in your craft beer journey and adventures. And you're listening to episode 186. We're recording on Monday. Yes, Monday, Labor Day, September 6, 2021. And we are live on Facebook. And if you would like to join us during our recording session sometime, you can do that easily on the Mondays before show release at uh, 8.30 Eastern time. Just jump on Facebook. You'll see the link and just join in and uh, you can interact with us as we're doing the show. And we may even answer your questions live for you. So that'd be great. And this episode, we're going to, like I already kind of hinted at, we're going to focus on some of our favorite new world hops. And these are hops that give us all those wonderful citrus, tropical, floral aromas and flavors that we've just grown to love in all of our, our hazy IPAs and, and even regular American ales have a lot of these new hops that really make them taste fantastic. And we do have a couple beers from Core 4 Brewing out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Our buddy Buck Buchanan, who was on the show, uh, I gosh, it must have been two years ago now. It feels like forever. It feels like forever. He was kind enough to send Chris and I uh, some beers from Core 4, and so we're going to drink two of those tonight on the show and give our tasting notes of them, as well as our, our great conversation, beer conversation that Chris and I have throughout our little uh, one-and-a-half to two-hour banter. And Eric, sure. <laughs> Eric said there's a, a light glitch in the matrix, but I don't know if it will be a problem. Okay. Well, good. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. All right. And again, uh, we, we usually do this right in the beginning of the show. We, Chris and I always want to thank all of our Patreon supporters because this episode is brought to you in part by our satisfied Patreon supporters like Mike Allen, William Schlimmer, and Amanda and Kevin Argauer, who are our virtual producers. And Tom Byrne, Jeff Seiler, Johan Halberg, Tara Carlson, Chad Lamasa, Mark Church, Matt Knight, Kirk Tabor, and Eric Gronley, who want to buy us a virtual beer. And if you enjoy the content we provide, we invite you to support the show by toasting your host or buying us a virtual beer or even becoming a virtual producer. You can explore the options on our support page by visiting patreon.com slash tap the craft. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to go into any feedback or voicemails or anything kind of low this time. That's okay. Uh, we can always hit those up next time. But uh, if you do want to ask us a question or leave us a voicemail, you can do that. The voicemail is number is 208-536-3359. Or if it's easier for you to remember, 208-53-ODDLY. And just go ahead and drop us a little, little voicemail there and we'll We'll put you on the air and we'll answer your questions as well. But if you don't want to get your voice on the show, you don't worry. We have other means for you to get your questions and, and uh, feedback out to us. You can do that through email at tap to craft at gmail.com or on Twitter and Instagram. Just follow us at tap to craft and feel free to uh, interact with us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash tap to craft. And of course, visit our website at tap to craft.com. Okay, Chris, I am winded. I just got okay. done just yammering away. So now I need to pass the baton over to you. So let's continue this conversation because now it's time to untap the craft and see what our listeners are drinking according to Untapped. So let's see what uh, we've got on Untapped. And remember, guys, if you want us to read your check-ins on Untapped, make sure you follow me at MCK1345. And uh, we usually record m uh, every other Monday. Uh, about 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. So um, within the last 24 hours, if you checked in a beer, we're going to read it. So our, depending on the list, though, because, you know, here in the United States, it's Labor Day. Everybody's at home doing a little extra drinking today. A lot of drinking. So I'm probably going to have to skip a few here and there so we can get through the list. Because when I went through it, I had to click the load more button about three <laughs> or four times today. So, uh, so we'll start off, we'll get the, uh, the good ones in there. Starting off with Kevin Page. He's drinking a Voodoo Ranger V2K IPA. And he said, had three of these yesterday. Super crushable with no foggy 8% effects. Four cap rating for that beer. Uh, and again, another one in the line of um, New Belgium's Voodoo Ranger series. 
man, it seems like it started off with like two or three. Now there's a couple of dozen of those things. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> next on the list is going to be David Martin. He's drinking a key bump, pure snow, uh, by hoof hearted brewing company out of Ohio, uh, four and a quarter caps for that beer, but no notes to go along with it. Um, moving on up the list, we are going to, uh, let's see, Sunny pa Pally, Paye. Sonny, you're going to have to tell me how I pronounce your name so I can pronounce it correctly. Uh, but he's drinking a DDH Bel uh, Belma and Mosaic IPA from, can't pronounce this one either, Arpus Brewing Company. And his check-in is in a completely different language, but there's also the words of uh, Cocos Ananas, which is pineapple, melon, piney, bitter. Um, so I'm going to guess that in this beer... Uh, you're getting coconut flavors, pineapple flavors, melon, some piney bitterness, and uh, we'll have to run that through Google Translate if we want to find out what it really says. Uh, but four and a quarter caps for that beer, for that uh, for that IPA, good mosaic IPA. I can't really say ba uh, anything bad about that. No. Um, next on the list, JC is drinking a Tritonia with cucumber and lime by Creature Comforts Brewing four and a quarter caps for this beer no notes to go along with it lots of four and a quarter caps this evening um mike allen doing his usual check-ins at the taco mac um but some highlights of his check-ins uh, alpha abstration volume 18 by wild leap brewing company four and a quarter caps for that one um let's see what else you got another four and a quarter cap for his Oktoberfest by left hand brewing company um, too legit to wit by Ironmonger. He wrote medicinal. Ew, a uh, one and a half caps. And I read that just <laughs> oh, because no. it's that bad. Um, and let's see. Moving on the list there to one more. Uh, drinking the lemonade, but it's just L M N A D E by Wild Leap Brew Company. Four caps for that beer. Um, up. On the list a little further, Robert, or as we call him, Chew Your Beer, is drinking a member IPA. Yes, it has the question mark. Member IPA by Green Cheek Beer Company. And he writes, amazingly delicious. Thank Ants. Ant. I guess it's one of your friends. His name maybe might be Anthony with the last initial Z, but it's A-A-N-T. Uh, four and three quarter caps for that beer out of five. Will, Will D is drinking a bat squatch by Rogue Ales um, and four and a half caps for that beer. No notes on that one. Uh, Denny, I remember bat squatch being one of those ones mm -hmm. that has some really cool um, artwork. Uh, artwork. Yeah. yeah. Um, Denny. Yeah. The phaser by Ecliptic Brewing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so three and three quarter caps for this beer. Um, it says it was canned on July 29th. You feel some of the ho the hops might have fallen off, but the aroma's good, great. Flavor leans to overripe mango and guava. Okay, mm -hmm. that sounds pretty good. Yeah. So, I guess let me just since you mentioned it, I'll just talk about it. Ecliptic is a Portland brewery that that the stuff I've had before I've really enjoyed, and the reason I really enjoyed them is because their hops they are really bright, right? And you get this really like sensation of of these bright popping hop flavors and so I, when i got this phaser i was expecting the same thing and and when i smelt it, i'm like oh it's gonna be good and i took a sip and then it was it, it it surprised me because the hops weren't as bright right they were kind of murky down with that that heavy uh you know like that over like i'm talking over over ripe like it's time to throw the mango <laughs> out type right drawing right? flies <laughs> yeah it's, it's got flies and it's really like the sugars have condensed into a real starting dense, to ferment yeah like a firm like 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 like, it, like the fruit is fermenting and it caught me off guard and i thought that maybe it's just the first couple of sips but no it lasted all the way to the end and i felt bad because all my friends gave this beer a four or, a, or an above and it was like six or seven people that checked into it that, that are on my, on my friends list. And I just felt bad that I, I, with what I had, I couldn't give it a higher rating because I just, I mean, I, and again, I don't know if it's because maybe that beer is better when it's only, you know, four, up to four weeks old, mm -hmm. but when it gets beyond that, 
maybe it uh, it starts to fall off and, and kind of condense those that sweetness into a heavier beer. Um, but I was a little bit disappointed. Sarah liked it. She had a I poured her a small glass of it. Good. And she enjoyed it. But I, I just was I guess I was anticipating much more from it because Ecliptic doesn't come to Boise. They just started bringing some beers in as well as some other Portland breweries that I'm, I'll talk about during my new Norworthy that I'm really excited to, to see here in the area. Okay. So that, that's um, the background. <laughs> okay. So one that I'm going to read by Kyle Lilly. I'm going to read this just because I want to do exactly what your check-in says not to do. Kyle Lilly is checking into a strawberry white claw seltzer. And he mm. said in his check-in, don't judge me. It was left at my house. <laughs> I just had to. I know. And you know what, Kyle? Look, if we can't give you crap about it, then, then don't check into it. Because you know when we read this stuff, I hope it was delicious. Uh, it was All so right. good. <laughs> right. um, Five cap rating. <laughs> no rating on that beer. Um, Robert or Chew Your Beer is drinking a uh, Mejor Vidal by The Brewing Project. And he wrote, first in my community to untap this beer. That's a proud day. It really is. Um, Mexican style lager with orange blossoms and honey. So crushable, so refreshing. Four and three quarter caps for that beer. Um, Mr. Jeff Seiler drinking out of his B cups, which is, well, I know I am. Um, I was going to say, I know <laughs> I you have two. one. You I got, got two right here. <laughs> you got two B cups just lying around all over the place. Uh, Jeff is checking into the Swami's IPA by Pizza oh. Port Brewing, which don't necessarily see that on the east coast too much uh love this ipa big piney and resinous notes one of my favorite west coast ipas from a great brewery four and a half caps for that beer okay i've heard good things about it i've never had it i want to have it um that's got to be from that uh, tap kings or whatever what was the uh something like that it was something like kings tap craft kings. beer kings yeah well we got a continuous check-in streak for show number 10,000. Uh, Chad LaMassa is drinking an old Eastern, old-fashioned, all-purpose miracle elixir by Mobtown Brewing Company. And he said, don't think I've had a ton of sour IPAs. This is pretty sour. Black cherry, black currants, and black berries. A lot of black in there. Uh, beautiful deep cherry color, four cap rating for that beer. Um, a lot of different tart and sweet fruits working in that beer too. yeah yeah the, the, again i've mentioned this before that whole sour ipa or or you know i guess a sour ipa it's it, it sometimes it can be done and they're really good but most of the time it's they don't kind of no, come don't. across that well but no. i i like black black currant is one of my favorite berries and um so I'd be curious about that one. That one sounds pretty tasty. You seem to like all the weird stuff, Denny. I, I do. You don't like, who doesn't like black currants or red currants? I like any kind of current, but black is my favorite. But how many people honestly <laughs> really have had black currants? You know, when I had them is when I used to use them when I was working in like commercial kitchens. It was like we were using it to make certain sauces and certain things that went with seafood. Like we used to make this yeah. this black currant ice that would go with our uh, our our raw oysters. Um, so, I mean, I never really knew about it until I used it professionally. So. Well, listeners out there, let us know how mu how how many of you have actually uh, enjoyed black currants. I, I I get I get this black currant jam. And I don't like jam. Like I usually just eat my biscuits and whatever, just, you know, with some butter on there or even plain, I'm, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, then when Sarah found this black currant jam, I, I said, I gotta, I gotta have it. I love black currants. And now I put jam on my biscuits and All it's just right. fantastic. Maybe, so maybe, it's, maybe it's just something I need to revisit is maybe go find some black currant jam. It's awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take your word for it. All right. Uh, Jeff Seiler is also checking into, and this is a beer that uh, I'd like to get my hands on, Ninja versus Unicorn by Pipeworks Brewing Company out of Chicago, I believe. And he said this was a bucket list beer for me, and it lives up to the hype. Thank God, because hmm. hype beers seem to let you down more than any, more than they uh, live up to it yeah uh <laughs> hoppy fruity and dank lovely stuff from pipeworks uh four and a half caps for that beer and 
man, Robert, your your boy Aunt Aunt Z is uh, hooking you up with some pretty good stuff. He's drinking the sound a uh, sound supply by Monkish Brewing. Uh, he said this one's off the hook. Thank you for this beer. Four and three quarter caps for that beer. Also, Robert, what's up with the um, four and three quarters? Why didn't these things get a whole five caps? Let me know. <laughs> And last but not least, Eric Gronley is drinking a Union Series number five, Old Blaggard, 2019 by Summit Brewing Company. And he said, I've been eyeing this one up for some time tonight on Teddy, Teddy's Kindergarten Eve. It felt appropriate. Aroma is boozy, but good. Flavor has great caramel, orange, bready, and earthy qualities. Faint hops at the end. Well done, Summit. Perfectly crafted. Four and a half caps for that beer and uh cheers to teddy going to kindergarten yeah nice and that's what everybody's drinking well good that's quite a uh variety and a lot of good beers on there especially all those four and a quarters and mm -hmm. four and three quarter and three quarters <laughs> from from chew your beer mm. okay well good i'm glad everyone's drinking having a good labor day weekend that's what we're here for barbecues drinking beers and and laughing and and letting loose a little bit like i did and hopefully yeah. like chris did so. did uh did you guys do any barbecuing or grilling while you guys were in pocatello no no uh Haley doesn't have a barbecue um we're, we're not that point what yet. she we needs need to for get, christmas well we need to get a shed we need we need to get something to store stuff in too so shed then maybe a barbecue but then she, that would mean she'd have to actually barbecue not just rely on me to come and barbecue we'll so we'll see Haley, we can teach you it's not that hard to do <laughs> yeah i got yeah yeah maybe maybe she'll be a grill master that'd be good okay well you know what chris uh i finished my uh him and glava okay hold that thought just hold how that are thought. you doing okay don't want i don't want to mess your palate up mm. it's good we're ready okay. to go all right well now it's time to do our first beer tasting notes with core four brewings soul shine american blonde now we're going light for the first one and nope, that's not. I it. pulled out the right one. I did. So here's their 16 ounce cans, Core Four Brewing Company, and then they have a nice little label right here. It's very small, Soul Shine, so you can tell what it is. Yep. <clears throat> so I appreciate that, and we, we're going blonde because you want to start light and end strong. And also, the second beer we're going to be doing is a New England IPA. And New England IPA that is using some of these hops that we're going to be talking about during the brew buzz segment. So I thought that was a perfect lead in. We'll start off with a low hop, very light, like not hoppy. I don't know. It might be hoppy. I haven't tried it yet, but maybe it is hoppy, but should be a low hop character beer to, uh, to see how they do their, their, you know, how clean their uh, light beers are. So um, I'm expecting some good stuff from, from here. Nice, clean, Mm -hmm. blonde ale I, i'm a i'm a big fan of blonde ales when Same. they yeah when they're when they're brewed nicely and just have some good character that comes out from those malts and even a little bit of a light hop character that just kind of finishes off is re very nice um this is a 5.9 percent abv beer and it's 17 ibu so it's gonna like i said it's gonna be low bitter low low bittering uh, that what they wrote about this is says nice clean refreshing beer this blonde ale is at the top of its game if you're looking for something light and full of taste, this beer is for you. Well, you know what? I'm looking just for that type of beer. So let's go ahead and pop this open, Chris. And we'll go ahead and pour it into our whatever. I got the uh, lager bee cup here for this okay. one. Okay. Well, I think my lager bee cup is in the uh, in the dishwasher. <laughs> so. Yeah. I don't know. I'm too scared to pour this thing up high. I'll probably end up spilling all over myself, but... Have faith in your abilities, Denny. So I'm doing a good job keeping the head reasonable, too. Look at that. Nice. Okay. I didn't quite get the whole thing in there, but beautiful color. Mm -hmm. Nice, uh, yeah. light golden hay straw. Well, a little bit str stronger than, than straw, I'd say. Yeah. It's, and uh, we've got a, we've got a, a quickly a, a head. Oh, look at that. Getting all fancy with your Come camera on. work. There we go. <laughs> a head that's quickly disappeared. Well, it's not quickly disappearing, but those are some pretty fast moving bubbles in there too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. The, so the fast, head. Yeah. It is disappearing fast. Yeah. Uh, we're about 
there you go. You're starting to see some of the beer through there too. So. Yeah. So, so yeah, my head, you can see my head just dissipated pretty quick, uh, but it did have a nice, while it was there, it did have, uh, yeah, some coarse, mostly coarse bubbles, um, uh, off white head, not, not pure white as far as I can tell. <laughs> now I want to, I want to give a little bit of a disclosure. So okay, I I'm like 90% back of being able to taste things. Um, oh. so like, I remember, so remember the other day I texted you and I was drinking that nimble giant and I told you, mm -hmm. I don't know if I did tell you, it tasted like I, all I could get was hot bitterness out of it. And it tasted like I was drinking carbonated water. Oh, I had yeah. one at dinner tonight. I could taste it. It was okay. good. So I'm pretty much back to normal, whatever normal is for me. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I've been really, really just kind of waiting to try these beers. So, yeah. Yeah. So the, um, right off the bat, uh, very nice malt, uh, br you know, bready, mm -hmm. uh, malt, like crackery malt, uh, like bready, bread doughy, crackery, yeah. uh, malt. I mean, really, really nice aroma. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm really enjoying the aroma on this. So that's, that's Let's already a good sign. I'm, I'm already enjoying this. Let's do you it. You take a sip. Let's just do it. Oh, not, oh, wow. This is very refreshing. Very. <clears throat> I am really enjoying it. I, this is, uh, it is clean. I appreciate the clean. Um, very refreshing. I almost get a little bit of honey flavor in there. Um, I mean, just, but again, it's, it's part of the, I think it's probably part of the hop bill that they use in there. Maybe it gives off a little bit of a, I, I had a problem last week, last episode too where I tasted something that I don't know if Jim tasted. I, I taste a little bit of lemon in the Oktoberfest, mm -hmm. but he didn't taste any lemon. And, and it might be the way that my taste buds are, are transforming the, the malt, you know, in, in the transition from the malt to the hop character comes, you know, sometimes comes across to me, maybe lemony, but, um, but yeah, I, I sense some honey in here. I'm not saying there's honey or anything in there, but it has a little bit of a, a clover, not, you know, a light, like a clover honey uh, character to it. At least on my first sip. Let me take a few more sips just to iron it out. But what, what do you, what do you think, Rick? Can you taste this one? So um, this one, I, I'm definitely getting, getting that, that, that bready malty flavor from it. Um, and one thing I do like about it is it's, it has some very, it feels like the bubbles are just a little bigger than they would be in most beers. Mm -hmm. Like the, the bubbles itself or the carbonation itself is very, very coarse bubbles. They disappear very quickly. Um, but for me personally, and again, I'm, I'm coming off of, you know, stupid virus that's running around uh, the world. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to just, I, I tr I'm literally trying to chew my beer, right? It's what yeah, I'm trying yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. So that way I can kind of get some air in there too. But as far as kind of anything different flavors wise, I'm really just kind of getting mostly maltiness. It's just kind of crackery, bready. Um, and I get a very, very, very little, little bit of, bitterness so again this one's 17 ibus this one's going to be very very minimally bitter um bitter <clears throat> is one flavor that i've been able to pick up on through this whole mm -hmm. nonsense um yeah so um but still very good like i don't it it's easy to drink um nothing just cloying in your mouth like just destroying your palate or anything this is definitely something you could uh, like they said in there, if you're looking for something light and just full of flavor, this is something you could definitely drink and have a few of, uh, clocking in, what was it? 5.9%. Yeah. 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 I, so 6%, almost 6% beer. You would never be able to tell it. Nah. This is like, and, and I don't, and this is not, this is not to say it's like drinking soda, but this is very reminiscent of just drinking something that you would never know was like beer. 
I mean, it tastes like beer, but it's not, there's, I mean, anyone that doesn't like beer, I think this would be, I mean, it, it tastes like beer, but it doesn't taste like beer. You know, like people that don't like beer, they typically would drink this and say, wow, this tastes great. Yeah. Uh, it's very refreshing, very crisp, full of flavor, but not heavy. There's, uh, I, I mean, I don't feel any like, uh, uh, heaviness of it with the with the the malt or, or sugars in it um i think whatever they hopped it with is like perfect uh i, I think it works really well and i mean I, I like this beer a lot i think mm -hmm. this is a i mean for my first core four brewing beer um i love it I, this is this is a summer drinker all the way i could just yeah or I can drink a six pack of this pretty easily yeah definitely <laughs> a lawnmower pool boat beach beer uh, at least in, in my eyes too. So, uh, but nice and clear color. I mean, yeah, it's like that light straw color. Yeah. Um, and even if we kind of see if we can spin it around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Look at all the light. <laughs> wow. Right. Look at you go. You're going crazy, so right? <laughs> but I mean, just nice golden color with that beer. Um, the, like, like we were talking about before the head doesn't really stick around too much, but it's, it's good. I like this one. And yeah. this is, this goes along with, I feel like my mantra the last, I don't know, 12 months. Like I just want more beer flavored beers, uh, you know, going from a Munich Dunkel to, you know, a Blondale, this is just good beer flavored beer. And I forget yeah. who I was having a conversation about with that, um, last week or something like that, where, you know, somebody was like, Oh my God, I got this beer from angry chair. It was this double chocolate cupcake, diabetes stout and i was like you go right ahead you can have it uh let's let's get something that's a little more easy to drink uh even if it's a 16 ounce can or a 25 ounce bomber or something but yeah i, I like this one a lot hmm. i rate this uh very high in my blonde ale I'm going to finish it off before I decide, but uh, at a minimum, this is for me and my, uh, for me rating a Blondell, this is a minimum of 4.5 minimum. I might raise it up depending on how it finishes, but great job, Core 4. Mm. I, I really like this beer a lot. Um, thank you for sending this to us. Yeah, thank you, Buck. We really appreciate that. Now, Denny, here's here's a, an opportunity for you to kind of say, I told you so. Now, if, if I'm going to review this beer mm -hmm. based on, I don't know, on overall, just, just overall <laughs> enjoyment, right? I'd probably look at, like, if I was going to look at it just based on an overall enjoyment, I don't know. I'd look at it like 3.75, but also mm -hmm. looking at it as the style, like how you like to rate beers, mm -hmm. I would definitely rate it a lot closer to that four and a half mark just mm -hmm. because of, how it's just very neat, very clean, yeah. Just yeah, good all around beer. It's yeah, very drinkable, not a single flaw. There's not one flaw in this beer. Mm -mm. I mean, yeah. that's that's fantastic for as light and crisp and six percent beer that I would get blitzed drinking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of this. I mean, that's yeah. that's impressive. I yeah, I'm I'm very pleased. I, like I said, my bare minimum right now, and I I. I I'll end up putting on untapped after we get done recording because I want to do it during the show. But it's at least a four and a half, and I might mm -hmm. raise it depending on the last little bit I have left. I, I, you know, sometimes uh, things just make me go yes, and 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 I'm not afraid to go five either. I might rate it five. We'll see. I, it's because blonde ales, a lot of times, a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of breweries don't do it right right mm -hmm. they end up putting too much bitterness in the finish they end up making it too sweet too heavy and those things turn turn me off to the blonde elf i i want a blonde elf that's drinkable and has flavor and the aroma i mean the aroma is fantastic and the flavor is i mean it's well balanced it's spot well, on really well done it really is yeah, and it's so. i mean if if you're brewing a beer like your lighter ones that you're gonna brew like case in point like when you're brewing this this lighter beer that's where all of your flaws will stand out you're going to brew a, a lighter you know 
color and kind of mouthfeel beer, mm -hmm. all your flaws will stand out in a beer like this. Like when you're brewing a, you know, a big old Russian Imperial stout, man, you could, there's room for mistakes in there mm -hmm. just oh, to, yeah. you know, let things slide a little bit yeah. stuff like this, where it's crisp and clean and easy to drink. Um, they did a really good job with this one. Oh, you froze up there for a second, but I, I think you said you did a really good job. That's right? exactly what I said. They did a really <laughs> it doesn't, good it doesn't job. come through. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I need a little bit of beer to get help get us through this uh, this brew buzz. So I'm going to save this last little bit, drink it as we go through the brew buzz. But uh, but I think I think I will end up rating this a five cap rating. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but um, like we already said enough. We said that if you're going to brew a blonde ale, this is the way to brew it. I yeah. think it's really, really well done. All right. Well, hey, Chris, let's get into the brew buzz. And the brew buzz is devoted to discussing various beer related topics. And this week we discuss hops, our fourth hop session where we pull a few hops out of the bag and discuss their characteristics. And in this episode, we will be covering some of our favorite, quote, new world hops. And I'm pulling this information from a variety. I mean, I've got four different sites that I'm going to getting information, pulling together to kind of come up with these little summaries of each of these uh, these hops. I, I chose nine, nine hops to talk about. And uh, these are the ones that you are probably seeing the most in the beers that you're drinking right now if you're drinking hoppy beers. And these are all the new, quote, new world hops. And uh, I'll have a list of these sources uh it, you know in the show notes so you can go and and check them out if you want um yourself but these are mostly from places that sell the hops so you know if you need to go find them to go buy for your home brewing this is a good opportunity to go and it, and some of them seem pretty reasonable i don't know i don't i don't brew the beer but i mean they're charging like you know two dollars and fifty cents for 20 ounces that seems pretty cheap but maybe it's high i don't know what do you think chris how, how much is uh normal hops going for i mean if i was buying well, is this fresh hops? Is this pelletized? No, hops? they're pellet. It... They're pellet hops. I mean, I was anytime I ever brewed a beer, like they'd sell them to you an ounce or an ounce at a time or so. Um, and normally, I was buying them like as part of like a group, like almost like a kit. But I mean, I remember paying five bucks. Okay. Four, five, six, seven bucks for certain, like an ounce of certain hops, but you know. It's Florida. Things are a little more yeah, expensive yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, Everybody you gotta gotta get them all the way from the Yakima Valley. <laughs> from Yakima Valley. Well, and that's it's funny you mentioned that because two of the sites are Yakima Chief Hops, and they talk about their varieties that they sell and produce, and also Yakima Valley Hops. So there's two uh, two sources there, as well as uh, um, hop variety descriptions from the hoplist.com site and hop varieties. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Um, oh no, freshhops.com has their hop varieties, and then hoplist.com has their hop variety yeah. as well. So there's four sites. I'll have them at the end of the uh, show notes. You can go and check them out if you want to go and and uh, see the more details on the, the brewing. You know how to incorporate them into your your home brew. To yeah, make sure you're doing it right. And a lot of good stuff come out comes out of the Yakima Valley. Oh yeah. As far as oh, hops go. Yeah, all the good lot, hops. Do. Well, a lot of good hops. Uh, and normally what I find is that when there are hops growing there, there's also probably wine coming out of the same yeah. area. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. And then, and plus there's a really cool, um, book series that I've read that's based out of the Yakima Valley too, called dies the fire, which is a okay. <laughs> really cool, just kind of apocalyptic, uh, book series that I started into is basically anything, um, anything that, that deals with combustion, like fuel won't combust in this book. It's like mm. planes fall out of the sky. So when you need to travel somewhere, like one of the things that I remember out of that book was that it was when it's a mile, when it's a mile away, it's a mile. <laughs> it's not <laughs> like you're just hopping in a car and going somewhere. So, yeah. You're, you're footing it. Yeah. All right. So um, as we did in the previous, it's been a while since we did a hop. I think it's almost been a year since we did uh, our last hop series. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit of uh, background here on how uh, hops are typically 
they're divided into three categories, aroma hops, bittering hops, or they can be an aroma and bittering hop, uh, and that's a dual purpose hop. So aroma hops have a lower alpha acid percentage and an oil profile associated with good aroma. These hops are generally used as a finishing or conditioning hop. The bitter hops have a higher alpha acid percentage, and these hops are generally used in the boiling process to extract bitterness. And dual purpose hops have qualities of both aroma hops and bittering hops, and they're used both for, aro you know, for aromatics and for bittering, and of course for flavoring as well. Now, I mentioned New World. So you, you probably heard old world, new world, you know, and you're like, well, what's, what, what is this? What, what's the difference? Well, basically old world hops, there, there's no real like hard line saying, Hey, these hops are new world. It's kind of like a idea. And basically in general, old world hops are traditional English, German, and noble varieties from the very beginning of, of, of beer. And, a lot of times the flavors are uh, not as pronounced. They're a lot more subdued and, and you'll, you'll get some, some earthiness and, and some character to it, but they're not as, as, uh, as powerful as the, the New World hops are. So basically New World hops are ones that, are, that pack more of a powerful aroma and flavor punch seen in all the modern IPAs and hoppy ales. You'll see terms like juicy, fruity, tropical, and citrusy. Those are often used in describing these type of hops, and they're uh, also uh, used a lot in the in the late portion of the brewing process to enhance the flavor profiles and aroma of these beers. All right, Chris, what we're going to do? I'll start with the first one, and then I'll let you, we'll just go back and forth. We can each talk about these, and I did this in alphabetical order. And now there's hundreds of hop varieties. Um, I'm I picked out the ones that that I really appreciate. And I think, Chris, I think you can appreciate these too. If there's any hops that I left out that you really like, let me know. We can hit those up in another episode. But these are the ones that I think most of the very good IPAs that you're having right now are have one or three of these hops in those IPAs because these, and we'll, you'll see when I, when I go and I talk about um, the beer that we're gonna drink from uh, from Core 4 Brewing, the, the New England IPA, you'll see that they're using these hops. And you'll, you'll see some of the ones in my new Norworthy that I drank, they're using these hops. So you're going to find that these hops are the ones that are really have made a, a big impact on the current flavorful IPAs and American ales right now. So I did alphabetical order through my list. And there's nine of them all together. So the first one, alphabetically, is John Reams, I think, favorite hop. Amarillo, and they call it Amarillo brand. So you'll see that a lot of these are brands because they're, uh, you know, they're trademarked or registered to a certain company, but I think you can, you know, different places will be able to, to grow them, um, but they're a, like a brand. So the Amarillo, uh, discovered by Virgil Gamache Farms, Amarillo is one of the top 10 aroma varieties utilized by craft brewers. It features relatively high alpha acids along with extremely high levels of, my, of myrcene uh, for a citrus and grapefruit flavors. This gives it a very sweet citrus flavor and aroma that is closer to oranges than grapefruit. The citrus character is backed by some light floral notes as well as melon and peaches. The uh, country of origin is right here in the United States. This is an aroma category hop. And some of the, this is just some of the uh, aroma profiles, you, aroma and flavor, both kind of combined, you can get from this, this uh, Amarillo hop. Uh, grapefruit, orange, lemon, melon, apricot, and peach. Those are just some of the flavors you can get out of the, uh, using, utilizing this hop. The beer styles that are, you can find this in, mostly are going to be IPAs and American style ales. The alpha acids are between 7 and 11%. Uh, of alpha acids, acids. So those are the ones that are, that are utilized for the bittering purposes. Uh, sub if you if you can't find Amarillo, you need to substitute for something else. That would be Cascade, Centennial, uh, Atatum, Chinook, Summer, and Cashmere. Those are some hops that you could throw in and uh, pick the right ones for the flavor profile you want, and you can kind of mimic the same thing that the Amarillo would do. Uh, Amarillo is, I think, I think it was used a lot 
earlier on. I think it's not as used as much as it is as you know now in modern days as it was ten years ago, but um, it is still a very good hop, um, and a lot of good beers uh, utilize this hop and, and give you some really good uh, you know trop or you know citrusy flavors out of it. Yeah, you'll see this okay, one pop Chris. up a lot. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, you will for sure. Yeah. All right, next one on the list is going to be Azaka. And Azaka was named for the Haitian god of agriculture. Is a is a hop big in citrus and tropical fruit tones. And it descended directly from Toy, Toyo Midori. Damn, nailed that one. Um, Toyo Midori, its greater parentage also includes Summit and Northern Brewer hops. It's bred by the American Dwarf Hop Association a joint hop breeding venture between Roy Farms, Wickoff Farms, and Green Acres Farms. Azaka is considered by many brewers as being well-suited to IPAs. Azaka is a dual, dual hmm, let me try that again. Azaka mm -hmm. is a dual purpose hop that produces sensational single hopped beers. And its excellent aromatic qualities have quickly made Azaka a go-to hop for late and dry hop additions in varying styles of beer. Try whirlpooling with the Zaka after flame out to maximize the juicy flavors and sweet aroma. <clears throat> so the country of origin in this one, again, right here in the United States, its category is going to be dual purpose and your aroma profiles, a lot of different flavors mm. in this one. Mango, papaya, orange, grapefruit, lemon, piney, spicy, pineapple, grassy, tropical fruits, and citrus, which I feel like mango, papaya, would go in the tropical fruit category and orange grapefruit and lemon would fall into citrus. But Hey, you know, I didn't write this article. No, well, no, no. It's, I, I, I just pull things out, but oh, I know you do. But some, but the thing is, is, is you can say tropical fruit, but it's nice to, and citrus, but it's nice to kind of pull out exactly no. those. Cause those are wide varieties as well. So yeah. we can just name a few that, uh, you know, it's not going to give you lime, but it will give you some lemon. Okay. <laughs> Um, beer styles for this hop, uh, IPAs, American style ales, which could be a little bit of everything. Um, and then saisons. Uh, so, um, yeah, it, this is a pretty well-rounded hop as far as for, for brewing beer. Um, your alpha acid is going to be a little higher than our previous one, 14 to 16% and substitutes. There is no substitute. Damn it. It's only a Zaka. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the few, there's a couple of these hops that, I mean, you could, you could substitute some hops that will give you some of those flavors, right? But uh, as far as like, here's a hop that will generally produce a similar beer if you if used right. There was none. There's I looked at all the sites. None of them have a substitute for this this hop. So if you if a beer tastes a certain way utilizing this hop, you might need to make sure you use this this hop, uh, you know, to get the best out of it. Um, and there was something. Oh. Uh, yeah, the American style, I just kind of, <clears throat> instead of listing out like wheat ales and reds and ambers and all that, I just put those all into American style ales. Any type of American ale, you can utilize this and give you some of those flavors in that beer. Uh, and this is one that I, I don't see this one as much as the other ones we'll talk about. But when I do see this beer or this hop, hop in a beer, it's usually a beer that I am I really enjoy, mm -hmm. and so I, I I wanted to call it out because I think you're going to see this hop being used in a lot more of the beers you're drinking. So I just wanted to go ahead and describe it for you guys. All right, now I'll talk about the next one. Everyone's heard of this hop. In fact, this hop is probably the first of the style that kind of really gave away to new new world. Hop. Well, I won't say the first because then John Reen will be on my ass. <laughs> if you really want to say the first, it'd probably be Cascade, Centennial. You know, the, all those are also, we already talked about the four C hops, right? Those are all, quote, new world or new age hops that have a lot of flavor, pronounced, you know, citrus, pine, <clears throat> resinous flavor that you would get that from those that you don't get in the older world ones. But moving away from the four C's and going into a newer, more recent, hop is a citra hop right we talk about citra all the time every beer has citra in it you know not every beer but a lot of them have citra in there in some way right mm -hmm. um and so you can't you can't we can't not cover this one because this is this is one that everyone's heard of and you guys are probably curious about 
about it, so we're going to talk about it. So it was developed by a hop breeding company and released in 2007. The Citra HBC 394 features high alpha acid and total oil content with a low percentage of co cohumuloin uh, in it. Okay. It boasts a complex lineage that includes the likes of Halital Mittenfru, which is the father, Tet Tetanger, U.S. version, the Brewer's Gold, and East Kent Golding. These are all the ones that kind of like blend together to make this, uh, this brand. Uh, it is one of the top 10 aroma varieties for craft brewers imparting a distinct citrus and tropical fruit flavors. Citra is the most sought after hop variety because it offers an intense citrusy flavor and aroma that revolutionized IPAs. And I think everyone can agree that that's a true statement there. I mean, Citra really came on strong and really made uh, IPA stand out that they could be more than just big, giant, bitter bombs, right? It gave out some nice flavors and aromas to the beers. It, par it pairs well with other varieties like Mosaic, Galaxy, El Dorado, and, uh, or is even strong enough to carry a beer on its own. And, and, and that's true. Again, I already mentioned that you're gonna find Citra in a lot of beers that are mixing hops together because it plays well with those other hops. But if you want a Citra hop beer by itself, it can also stand alone by itself really well. Citra hops are noted for their high uh, ger I go with geranol. Geranol, geranol content, which is bile transformed by yeast into citronol, 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 citron. Yeah, that. Citronellol, like a citron, citron, citron alcohol, I guess. <laughs> a highly sought after aroma com compound in fruit forward IPAs. It's like citronella, kind of, right? Gives it's you that. LO. Yeah, but this is the alcohol version of it. <clears throat> Whatever. Uh, the country of origin is the United States. Another great hop coming out of the U.S. It is a dual purpose hop. Some of the aromas and flavors are get grapefruit, melon, lime, gooseberry. Who's ever had a gooseberry? And passion fruit. The Those same some people that the... had black currants. <laughs> You're probably right. Uh, I probably had a lot of gooseberry then. <laughs> Uh, beer styles that, that really work well with this, of course, the IPA, American style ales, any of the ales, wheat ales, red ales, you know, ambers, uh, and saisons. Saisons that, uh, you know, a lot of times we think of saison as, as being a really uh, uh, out there flavor, you know, maybe even barnyardy, uh, depending on, on how it's made. But, uh, but a lot of these, you know, I've had some really good saisons that are made with citra. That, that give it an extra twist on the, the flavor profile and really nice. Alpha acids between 11 and 15%. You can substitute Simcoe, Cascade, the US version, and Centennial and Mosaic uh, for this hop if you needed to. Okay, so, so there's, there's the citrus. That's the big one. All right, Chris, now you can go to one of my other favorite uh, hops. The good old Galaxy brand. Galaxy and is so one, good. Yeah, this one. <laughs> Uh, it's been convert commercially available since 2009. Galaxy is the most internationally recognized Australian hop variety. Its lineage is going to include high alpha Australian hops and European cultivars, cultivars, um, specifically German pearl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Galaxy has the distinction of sporting the highest percentage of essential oils in the industry and galaxy hops are prized for their big aromas of oranges, peach, guava, passion fruit, uh, especially when it's used as late additions to the beer. Galaxy hops are perfect in hazy IPAs and it works well with the usual suspects of citra and mosaic. The flavor is often quite intense upon production, but it, it mellows out as it matures. Now, first, first one on our list that's gonna be their country of origin, Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and its category is going to be dual purpose. Their aroma profile, passion fruit, peach, and clean citrus. Yeah. And some styles for this beer, their IPA, pale ale, and ESB are extra special bitter. Uh, alpha acids. Now, Denny, can you explain these alpha acids to me why it was written like this? Because <clears throat> nobody had this the same thing and they're so drastically different i had to add both so okay. i have two sets from different and, and again i don't know if it's because different batches at different times that they were produced produced these at different levels 
but as you read them, you'll see there's two different levels of, of uh, alpha acids here. Okay, so two, <laughs> two uh, ranges on this one, starting at 11.6 and going to 16%, or starting at 14 and going to 20% as far as alpha acids yeah. go. So yeah. <laughs> 12 to 18. How about we meet there? 13 that to sounds 18. good. Yeah, 13 to 18. I'll go with that. 13 right. to 18 sounds about right. Um, substitutes for this hop, you could use uh, Citra, Amarillo, and Centennial for this one. Centennial. Yeah. All right, Denny, yeah. what's... So for me... Oh, let me just say, for Galaxy, though, I love the Galaxy, uh, the the orange flavor that comes mm. out of Galaxy. That That's the one that when, when they can make a beer with this and that that clean citrus orange flavor comes out that just like takes it over i love that that flavor and i think galaxy does that the best right they they're the ones that can definitely pull out that uh that really orangey uh flavor that's what i like well that was going to be my next question i was going to ask you what do you like so much about these galaxy oh there you go that's that's what i like yeah (laughs) it's the it's the one hop that i think does that best okay and if i want to have a beer that has that clean orange like you can draw out that orange right out of it that's this is the one that i i love gotcha personally yeah. all right well then let's talk about the next hop on the list okay so here's one that uh um that is now when we talk about the new world quote i'm using quotes new world hops most of these hops are going to come from the, from this united states as you'll see or they're going to come from you know australia and new zealand area and this one I'm going to mention, maybe people will argue with me that it's not really a new world hop because it comes from Germany mm. and German hops aren't typically, but this is a new, this is a, you know, relatively new hop that came, you know, uh, you know, they, they went and, and uh, spliced all these genes together and made this hop in Germany. So I think that this, in my book, this is a, this is a hop that I really enjoy in beers that uh, that aren't necessarily big in flavor, but have a pronounced character of the flavor without being too big. And this is Mandarina Bavaria. And this is what I call the subtle big, big hop beer, right? Because it's not really big, but it, it's a subtle flavor that makes you feel like it's a big flavor. That's my own take on it. But I love, I, I really do enjoy beers that have this Mandarina Bavaria hop in it. So this was bred to Hop Research Institute in Hull, and uh, released in 2012, uh, Mandarina Bavaria was commercialized as a new German aroma variety in response to growing demand from the craft beer industry for distinct flavor profiles. It is the daughter of Cascade and displays many citrus characteristics. It is useful for both flavor and aroma and imparts slightly sweet notes of tangerine and citrus, especially when used for dry hopping. And I think that's the key, right? If you use this beer, in the dry hopping, uh, or just hop in this beer, just hop in the dry hopping thing, and you and you really can pull out some of those subtle citrus tangerine. The tangerine is big here, where it's more of a sweeter orange tangerine type uh, character. I think it works really well. So I love this hop in like like lighter wheat ales, maybe even uh, a blonde ale like we just had. If they use a little bit of this just to give a little bit of of, of, a, of a light citrus note at the end, I think it works really well. Uh, the country of origin, like I mentioned, is Australia. It's mainly used for an aroma hop, but it can be due for purpose, but I think I think the main purpose is, is for aroma and and, uh, fl- and some flavor. Uh, the, aroma, the profile you're gonna get is tangerine, grapefruit, and lime. Uh, IPAs and Saisons are the main beers, but like I said, um, that this is just what they kind of suggest it's, it's used for, but I think it works really well for wheat ales and blondes that, that have just impart a, a light, lighter flavor in there. Uh, alpha acids are a little bit low, um, uh, seven to 10%. You said Australia. Did I say Australia? I meant Germany. I swear you did. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I've, I've had a few beers today, so <laughs> if you if it, anyone is not watching me, probably sees that I'm a, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, feeling a little bit good. So I might have said something. I meant Germany. Germany, this is Germany. Uh, 7 to 10%. So it is a little bit, It's I mean, it does have a little bit of higher, but it's right in the mid-range of the alpha acids. Uh, you can substitute Columbus Nugget or the U.S. Cascade 
variety for this hop. Okay, Chris, the next big, big hop. I mean, I feel like we've talked about this one four times out of the last. Of course. How many, of course. Uh, how many hops that we've discussed already? <laughs> the Mosaic brand hop. Uh, this one's developed by Hop Breeding Company and released in 2012. Uh, Mosaic HBC 369, it sounds like a science experiment gone wrong, uh, contains high alpha content and features a unique and complex aroma profile that translates favorably into a variety of beer styles. It is a daughter of Simcoe and a nugget-derived male. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> I told you, I'm going to be coughing a lot today. Um, well, you cut that out really good because I didn't even hear it. I know. See, that <laughs> mute button. Is, and then I can get right back on and use that mute button appropriate, like a professional. Nice. Um, mosaic hops feature complex but clean flavor characteristics and are known for their triple use profile, encompassing bittering flavor and aroma. Wow, just an all-out overachiever mm -hmm. of a hop. All right. They have high alpha acids, but low cohumulone, which makes them pleasantly hoppy, carrying flavors of mango, pine, citrus, and herbs and aromas of tropical and stone fruit. It's starting to sound delicious. Mm -hmm. Mosaic is named in honor of the artistic assortment of aromas and flavors it is capable of presenting. Its country of origin is right here in the United States. Its category is dual purpose. And in its aroma profile, you will find flavors like blueberry, tangerine, papaya, rose blossom, and bubble gum. That's quite, it's an appropriate name if you, if you do yeah. really think about it. Yeah, it's a mosaic of flavors, right? Mm -hmm. Things that, that, that are like complete opposites, but they blend together. Yeah. Um, some beer styles where you'll find this hop in use, pale ale, IPA, and I think this is the first one that we've read, stout. So yeah, that's a, I, I that was... again, a wide spectrum of beers that this is going to cover. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that, uh, you know, if you want to add a, a little bit of fruitiness to it, maybe, you know, some of that blueberry, uh, <clears throat> bubble gum, you know, into your stout, you might be able to, you know, use this. I, I think that this, this hop, I, I enjoy beers that are made just with mosaic, mm -hmm. but I don't think that mosaic on its own is as good as when it's blended with other hops that kind of combine into it and just release like a bunch of different flavors throughout the the whole profile of, of drinking the beer and i think that's what mosaic's strength is is just complementing other hops to make them better and make itself better you know it's really good um you know hop to do that i think Sounds like it's quite diverse yeah all right, alpha acids are going to be clocking in at 10.5 to 14%, and the one and only substitute for this, Citra. 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 So, so Citra and Mosaic are kind of like similar, right? I mean, as far as they're, they can be used to help each other, but honestly, I don't know if really you can, I mean, I don't think Citra is going to really ma you know, make the same exact beer as Mosaic, but, no. but uh, I think, but they're both good at, at complementing other hops as well. Okay, the next one is a is a hop that uh, I think that right now most of the new age IPAs are going to incorporate this hop in it. I see this all over the place, and yep. it really is uh, you know making some really good uh, hazy IPAs. And this is the uh, Motuka uh, brand. This is uh, developed in New Zealand. Institute for Plant and Food Research Hop Breeding Program and released in 1996. Now, this hop is released a long time ago, right? This is the oldest hop besides, no, even older than Citra, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't remember this hop really being, uh, you know, a, a presence in beer until recently. It's It's been really, people are, are bringing it back. And I don't know if it's because other hops, hops aren't available and they're forced to use this hop. And they're finding out that wow, this hop is actually pretty good. I, maybe that's the key. I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not out there trying to buy hops, so I don't know. But I've seen a ton of this hop being used in beers recently, and I think it's doing a really good job. Um, so yeah. So it was uh, released in 1996. Uh, Matuka is a cross between a New Zealand breeding selection and uh, Saz hops. 
It offers a unique aroma and flavor profile suitable for producing big beer styles. Matuka performs well when used in multiple additions from a single hop fill. Has a unique flavor and aroma of fresh tropical limes that can be incorporated into a number of styles. It's refreshing and zesty character is perfectly suited for single hopped IPAs, but also shines in Belgian styles like Saisons and Wits. It can also uh, be used in thirst quenching pilsners and lagers. Uh, again, this country of origin is New Zealand. The category is aroma. Uh, the aroma profile we've already kind of mentioned, lime, lemon, and tropical fruit. Uh, beer styles, English style ales, lagers, pilsners, IPAs, and Belgian ales. Alpha acids are fairly low at 6.5 to 7.5. And it says you can substitute either Saz, the, the German variety, or uh, Saz U.S. variety, and Sterling hops can be substituted. So, Matuka, I, I guarantee you start looking at the beers, what the hops are in these beers you're drinking, you're going to find this hop in a lot of the beers that you're enjoying. All right, Chris, I think this is the last one, right? No, no, we got one more after this. This, yeah, one more. you're going to be talking about my current favorite hop. Okay. So go for it. Sabro, Sabro brand hops, <laughs> and Sabro is or the sabro hbc 438 is the newest release from the hop breeding company i'd like to learn a little bit more about the hop breeding company because <laughs> we've mentioned it what four times now yeah um sabro is an uh, aroma hop that is notable for its complexity of fruity and citrus flavors and sabro's pedigree if it would scroll down there we go sabro's pedigree is the result of a unique cross-pollination of a fee uh, female neo-mexicanus hop now it. it imparts distinct tangerine, coconut, tropical fruit, and stone fruit aromas and pronounced cream character with secondary flavors of cedar, mint, and vanilla. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that uh, isn't that bizarre, the it, two flavors? <laughs> it's bizarre, but man, I I'm sitting here thinking about a beer. Um, and then I'm also like skimming through and looking at the beer styles, going, man. I would like those flavors in my beer. Um, and I actually had a beer uh, a couple of months ago that was fermented on cedar chips, which I loved it and hated it all at the same mm -hmm. time. Uh, yeah. Cause that's such a strong flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Smells great. Doesn't always taste the greatest in beers, but anyway, <laughs> um, <clears throat> with a robust brewing performance, Sabro proves to be a strongly expressive hop that translates into flavor and uh, translates its flavor incredibly well into beer. Uh, its country of origin is in the United States and its category of hops is it's going to be for aroma purposes. Mm -hmm. It's aroma profile. I mean, we've already touched on so many different, um, so many different notes with them but citrus stone fruit coconut tropical fruit herbal flavors tangerine uh, and some beer styles you're going to see this used in pretty much spans the gamut ipa saison porter stout fruit beer and american pale ale alpha acids are going to be a little higher 13 to 17 percent and just like one of the other ones i read there is no substitute for sabro hops and honestly there is no substitute to Sabro hops. I, I came across this hop, I think, for the first time two years ago. And from the very first beer I had with it, I said, what is this hop? I love it. <laughs> and every Sabro beer I've had since, and I've had wet, and the wet hop one, the fresh hop Sabro, mm -hmm. even more incredible wow. than the regular ones. And I just, I'm telling you, this the Sabro hop is kind of what, got me to want to do another hop session with these type of hops for one thing we're talking a lot of, a lot of, a lot of hazy ipas a lot of juicy stuff that that we might mention some of these hops and i think it's a good idea for our listeners to understand what these hops are all about what when we say these hops what what are they now they have a reference to understand when i say sabro that this is what it's providing and uh, i'm telling you now it can be off-putting to some people because there, it can have a strong coconut character, especially in the finish. At like as the beer finishes, it can take on a strong coconut and not toasted coconut, but more like a coconut uh, milky like, like type a raw character, coconut. right? 
like a raw coconut. And that can be off-putting to some, but I'll tell you what, it just gives you that, it, it just, for me, it just fulfills a tropical drink type mm-hmm. uh, mentality, right? Like I'm getting that. this beer on a, on a tropical island and it just tastes fantastic. So, so Sabro, yeah, go out there and try the Sabro hop ones. I absolutely love this hop. I love the beers. There hasn't been a, a single Sabro beer that I haven't absolutely fallen in love with. They're, they're all good. Okay, Chris, I think we're down to the very last one. And again, this one is one that's been around for a while, uh, since 2000. This is Simcoe. And Simcoe, I th- if I remember correctly, Simcoe had a rough start because uh, this this hop, if I remember correctly, if if not used correctly in the brewing process can give you off flavors of garlic like strong garlic or vegetal character i think it was simcoe and i may be totally off john will tell me if i'm totally off like we'll, I think, we'll get it we'll get an angry text in like a week and yeah a half. yeah but maybe <laughs> I, I might be thinking of someone else but i was thinking it was it was simcoe but who knows i i it might be actually you know what i think it was mosaic now that i think about it i think mosaic if if not brewed, uh, you know, if if left too long in the boil or or some other things, it could it could give off a garlicky, oniony, vegetal thing. But I'm thinking Simcoe was too, or maybe it was a, maybe Simcoe was a cat, cat like uh, aroma or, or flavor. But everybody loves a good cat like aroma in their beer. But but let's forget about that because you know what, all the breweries learned how to brew with it if it did have problems, and now Simcoe beers are really good and you you will see simcoe used in a lot of the beers that you're yeah, that you're drinking right now as well so developed by yakima chief ranches and released in 2000 simcoe ycr 14 is known for its brewing versatility versatility and unique aroma characteristics it continues to rise in popularity becoming one of the top 10 varieties in craft and home brewing industries simcoe has great bittering qualities but also packs a complex aroma of stone fruit pine and citrus zest it truly is a dual purpose hop that is capable of standing on its own or in a single or capable of standing on its own in a single hop beers in a wide range of styles country of origin is the united states it is a dual purpose hop you can get some passion fruit berry pine earth citrus and bubblegum flavors and aromas out of it uh beer styles IPA, American Pale Ale, Wheats, Saisons, Ambers, they're all, all good with it. Alpha Acids, 11.5% to 15%. And if you want to substitute, you could use Summit Hops to substitute. All right, there we go, Chris. I think we did pretty good busting through those nine different, quote, new world or new age hops uh, that you're finding in your, in your hoppy beers right now. Uh, that was pretty good. But... Guess what time it is? It's time to bust. Yes. Yes. It's time for another beer. And we're going to bust open. Yes. The party shirt. Nice. Nice and focused, too. The party party shirt. shirt. The Core 4 Brewings Party Shirt New England IPA. Just as as I'm dripping water all over the place. And even better, because I literally just texted Buck and said, hey, the blonde was delicious. Now we're moving on to the party shirt in just a minute. So now he's either like hopping on and watching the show or <laughs> pissing his pants a little bit. I'm not entirely sure, but the beers have been great so far. So, all right. <clears throat> so, did you pour that sucker yet? No. Oh, oh I look did. at you. <laughs> Jesus. Look at the head, too. And it's nice funny because we go through like, oh, we want to we wanna check out the aroma and the head. <laughs> and then he's like, did you pour it yet? here yeah. we're gonna pour it into the ipa glass okay oh yeah i used a stout glass used a stout <laughs> glass like a damn amateur <laughs> sorry i accidentally Ooh, i was in a hurry a getting up here and i grabbed the wrong glass so i'm drinking oh. an ipa out of a stout glass <laughs> but you know what it, it might have worked out because look my head's being contained i know this, look, uh... i poured fast like i wanted to catch up and uh, it's okay it's okay so Okay, so first off, though, I this beer head, is a little though. bit clear for a hazy. Just saying. What do you, how's yours? Is yours hazy um, or is it clear? 
don't know. Oh, yours is like, hazy. Mine, look, how come mine's not hazy? Uh -huh, he he because you poured it into the wrong glass. I'm, um, my entire glass is here. There's, there's no haze on mine. I oh, got, come. I got the haze. I got robbed. <laughs> um i mean looking at mine it's clearly hazy clearly hazy wow that's that's quite a uh I, no no i, I saw I, I can see yours is hazy yours is clearly hazy <laughs> yeah mine but mine is clearly clear but it's i mean it's not perfectly clear but it's definitely not like yours i don't know i feel like the color on mine and i feel and especially when i'm i've got this whole green screen behind me it sets off things but i don't know um I'm getting like a, like a, an amber color, uh, a light, light amber color, like maybe even golden. And I'll admit, looking at my beer compared to your beer, <laughs> it might. You can almost see me. Well, it's, there's a little haze. This is not as hazy as yours or Robert's. Robert, to your beer, he's, he also had, you know, got a pet care package from Buck. And okay. his was hazy as well. Okay. okay. So mine, I, and as far as like the head goes, the head is just, it's dense. I mean, it, it is, is dense. just sticking yeah. around. Um, yeah, I still got some here. Yeah. I mean, it's... it is, it's almost like, I mean, you can make this mountain of head on my, uh, on my glass while I take a picture here. Um, mm. But that, that head is dense. Uh, I mean, I mean, look at it. You can, yeah i mean your head is really good mine's starting to die down but it's still yeah you're dense dense bubbles uh very fine a few coarse ones in there but it, it is hanging around so that's good mm -hmm. uh, i didn't mention that this is 6.2 percent i uh uh abv 46 ibus so it's right in the middle even better is and what they have to say about it this hazy new england ipa is loaded with amarillo Simcoe and Citra hops, the three like old, like the foundations of, uh, you know, of these, uh, these hops. It's the right beer to drink while picking out your favorite party shirt. Mm. Do you have a favorite party shirt? Um, or did you have a favorite party shirt? Favorite party shirt is no shirt at all. <laughs> I almost came on the show tonight with no shirt at all. You know but... what's funny? I always did the same thing. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I just wore this hat and no shirt whatsoever? <sighs> I, uh, Our viewers I, uh, would just eat. I it would either... out. Yeah. Our yeah, viewer I rating a... would even be through the roof or <laughs> the, just the FCC I didn't wanna... would call us. Yeah, nobody. Uh, actually, you know, that would just make sure nobody watched our YouTube for yeah. sure. But but yeah, I had a, I had a muscle you know, shirt on and I don't want to, I want to come on and, and record in somewhat decency. So I went and took it off. And I said, Hey honey, I'm just going to go record like this. She says, more power to you. Do it. She's yeah. all for it. <laughs> well, I, uh, because of the weekend that it is, um, in, uh, at the gorge amphitheater, Dave Matthews mm -hmm. band, uh, just finished up their, their weekend at the gorge. Oh, so, nice. Um, nice. We're, that's one of my bucket list places to go see this band play. But, uh, um, yeah, I, that was funny. Cause I, I, I even said to Megan, I said, I put my hat on because I mean, I just didn't feel like doing my hair today. <laughs> I had a hat on all day and I said, I'm not doing my hair to go on the podcast. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't feel like doing my hair either. Yeah, I know it shows. <laughs> It really shows. Um, and I was like, man, wouldn't it be funny if I would have just hopped on, just jump on there, just no shirt. We could do it. We could do a shirtless. I mean, I, I don't think we're going to gain many uh, new list, new followers. I know, we, but we we, might maybe get you more will. Page, maybe we get more Patreon followers that way. <laughs> yeah. Pay us to put our shirts on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's get back to this beer. So have you taken a sip yet? I have. Tell me you didn't take a sip. Look, I haven't. I, I've been trying to, but okay. I'm like, no, I don't want to take a sip yet. But uh, uh, okay, let's do. This. I'm smelling some. Uh, I'm sm I'm smelling like some sweet uh, tropical fruits off the nose. As I just put my nose in it. But uh, it smells good. It's got a nice aroma. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a sip now. Okay, let's do that. So for me, this tastes like a, 
more of a, a juicy, like a like a combination juicy West Coast. Uh... Okay, so then you got the same beer that I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. There's our there's our verification. We got the same beer. Uh, I don't know why yours isn't, or maybe you're just seeing it a little differently. But yeah, just just like you, I got some. Yeah, it's like it's it, to me. It's to me. I I I don't think I would label this New England IPA. Um, I would name it well for yours a hazy IPA, but this is um, to me this is coming across more like just a like a juicy like a juicy West Coast. It's got a little bit of bitterness in there, which mm -hmm. I like. I like the bitterness, and it's got uh, you know juicy tropical uh, flavors in there, but it's not. It doesn't have that, uh, uh, you know, I expect si like higher citrus notes. Mm -hmm. um, this is more tropical notes. Uh, I also expect to have uh, uh, a little bit more smooth, creamy, fluffy, some fluffy, yeah, fluffiness in there. And this yeah. is coming across more like a standard IPA. And again, that's what mine looks like, right? Mine looks like a standard IPA. Yours so does, at least on the yeah. video. Maybe all the oats and stuff were left in your glass and not mine. I don't know what happened here. Yeah, I mean it's and it's very clearly. Well, again, I keep saying we keep saying the word clearly, but it's definitely um, looking at mine. It's definitely translucent. Um, <clears throat> you can see the light coming through it, but like if I put my hand behind it, you certainly can't see any detail other than my shadow going between mm. the light and yeah. the beer glass. Yeah. Um, and yours on my end <laughs> looks extremely clear yeah you can see light behind i mean you can see that's shine me through but it's fine it's it's a good beer though it's not it's just it's just it's just not what i would expect from a new england ipa i i like i said i have expectations that my new england ipa is going to be a lot more cloudy uh more orange julius looking mm. softer a soft a softer mouthfeel and uh more creamy character this tastes like um a very nice tropical fruit forward uh west coast ipa meaning that it's got you know it's got that it's got a nice little uh, nice bitter finish to it not mm -hmm. overly bitter but it's got a, a nice uh, bitter finish to it but tropical fruit up front yeah and i get tropical and citrus and then i really really like the fact that it's more that piney not even piney but like that more resinous um yeah you're right piney, it does have some resinous, piney yeah. bitterness at the end of it yeah and, it, and i think um i feel like that this is a kind of a good middle middle ground right like it's again on my end we've got this this hazy uh cloudy beer that I definitely get, like I said, the, the tropical notes. Um, I don't know if the mouth feels a little different because, you know, I can't feel what's in mm -hmm. your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but so that's going to be just, I think it's a good middle ground of that West Coast, but also New England IPA where they mm -hmm. just kind of meet in the middle because you get the bitterness and the yeah. resinous from the West Coast, but you also get the, the, uh, the tropical fruits and the citrus. And, you know, this is a, I wouldn't call it, you know, they get that cloud like fluffy mm -mm. New England IPA kind of thing, but it's also not there's there's still some softness to it. Yeah, yeah, it's not harsh at all. It, 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 uh, but you're, but you did a good job. I think you did a good job of explaining. Yeah, the, it's the, the bitterness that the West Coast bitterness is that resinous, you know, pine character but not over the top right it just mm -hmm. has that nice character at the end which gives it a little bit more body in the finish mm -hmm. uh but like i said it's just for me it's missing the the body of the of the new england that i'm used to seeing i mean i drink a lot of new england ipas uh, or at least hazy ipas and, I, and it's missing uh you know that that softness and that uh, uh fluffiness that that we're used to but hey there's nothing wrong with the beer. The mm -hmm. beer is good. The, yeah, the beer is a good in. American IPA. Uh, and I would even lean it towards the West Coast side because I drink a lot of West Coast IPAs. Um, yeah, this is a good West Coast IPA. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny just to see too, like just the, the difference in 
from what I can see in your glass as compared to my glass. And, you know, it, it yeah. mine's, <clears throat> mine's definitely more orange juice looking. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe yours was the beginning of the batch and mine was the end or it. Yeah. Well, it all depends on how they canned it and where the, yeah, where these cans ended up. And, uh, if, if yours was at the part where it was like agitated mm -hmm. and, uh, or you, they switched or maybe they switched kegs when they were canning it and, and, uh, it was like a, a keg switch or who, I mean, who knows what happened? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure how they're doing this. I don't know if they're, canning this right off of the bright tanks mm -hmm. or if they're canning it out of kegs i'm but, assuming they're canning it out of kegs yeah but no denying that this is a very good beer no simple, it's good. simple yeah, straightforward I, very good yeah. beer um and again we, we're just we denny and i tend to be a little more picky when we're like okay well <laughs> this beer went from oklahoma to idaho allegedly went from allegedly. oklahoma to idaho and then oklahoma to florida so I mean, you send a beer 15 miles in, or 1,500 miles in two different directions. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, it's, it's a pretty amazing task if you can get the exact same thing in the exact same person's hands yeah. 2,000, 3,000 miles away. So um, don't want to make it sound like we're just being too nitpicky. Great beer. No, just no, great no. Beer. It's a good beer. No, I don't have any complaints. I don't have any complaints about the beer. The beer is good. Mm. I'm just being, you know, on the style selection. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Well, thank you again, Buck, for sending the beer. I look forward that we have two more beers on our next episode that we'll be drinking, a weed ale and an amber. And I can't wait to try those because those are two styles that you don't see a lot in breweries. And, I, and I'd love to see what, what their take on it is as well. Let's get our, some peaches in there, too. Yeah. Ooh. There could be some peaches in there. <clears throat> So, Chris, uh, it's time for our new Noteworthy Beers thing. But you don't have any beers to talk about? I don't, and, and I'll tell you why. Okay. I, uh, the, the new beers that I tried over the past three weeks, either two things happened. One, I couldn't really taste them too well. <laughs> or they were kind of mediocre. Um, yeah. And I'm even fortunate enough to say that I was in – the great state of Ohio, uh, for, for a, a quick little trip. And the beers that I did get to try were kind of mediocre. Plus I was starting to have congestion and stuff when I was there. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I didn't really get to enjoy. I don't think I didn't really get to enjoy the beers that, uh, I, I could have, I don't really, let me say that didn't get to enjoy the beers the way that I really wanted to have wanted to. So, yeah. Um, okay. I'm not, I'm not going to put anything on my list today because everything that I did rate was pretty, <clears throat> was pretty mediocre. Um, okay. three and a half, 3.75, that kind of thing. No problem. No problem. I, I had a lot of beer and I had Good. a lot of highly rated beers, but I'm going to talk about three. Okay. And, uh, I picked these three, I handpicked these three of all the great beers I had. And, and I did have a lot of good beers in the last two weeks. <laughs> so the first one I'm going to talk about is another brewery from Portland. Oregon that uh, I've heard so much great things about. And I finally saw we had some of their beer in uh, in Boise and I had to pick it up. And that's Von Ebert Brewing. And the beer that I found at, the, at our local co-op uh, was their Sector 7 New England IPA. And uh, just so you guys, we, we just got done talking about the hops and these new age hops that we're using. I wanted to point out that this beer that I'm going to talk about that uh, that I'm going to rate here uh, has Mosaic, Simcoe, Citra, and Galaxy. Again, four of the hops that we just mentioned in this uh, in this segment. And uh, this one, what I said on Untapped is Big Citrus Juicy Hazy Boy. I've been excited to try beer from Von Ebert and glad to find a single beer in Boise. Really want uh, really want to try other styles, to sh or I really want other styles to show up as well. But this hazy is fantastic. Please keep sending beers to Boise. Yes, Von Ebert. Please keep sending beers to Boise, and I want to see your loggers, your pilsners. I know that some of my friends here in the local area have found some of their other beers, and I just need to go and find them myself. Uh, but I'm looking forward to more of their beers coming in because they do make some very good beer. I give this one a five or 4.5 uh, cap rating. Um, 
The second beer I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go away from the IPA for a second. It's going to be a local beer from Payette Brewing. And this is uh, the Payette Brewing Star Garnet Swartz Beer. And everyone knows that I love a good black lager. And this one is for, uh, in help celebrating their, I think it's their 10 years anniversary, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's 10 years. Uh, I'm really enjoying this black lager. Great flavors, refreshing and not sweet. Well-balanced and very drinkable. Make this a year-round, Payette. Yes, mm -hmm. Payette, please. If not a year-round, bring it back seasonally because this beer is fantastic and I need more black lagers in my life. I gave this also a four and a half cap rating. And then the last beer I'm going to talk about is another IPA. This is from Evil Twin Brewing. Yes, Evil Twin. And this is called the Modern Hipster American IPA. It, utilize, it uses Galaxy, Matuka, and Sabro. Three of my favorite hops in this one beer. It's no wonder that I love this beer so much. I said very pleasant hop aroma, ripe tropical citrus <laughs> fruit on the nose and flavor. This is very smooth, silky, with so many wonderful flavors. I really like this beer, and I guess I might be coming a modern hipster. 4.5 cap don't. rare. <laughs> Please don't. You're going to be having avocado toast and I'm a, all yeah, kinds of stuff. I'm right there. I mean, uh, again, Evil Twin, um, modern hipster, fantastic beer. Highlights three of these really great, flavorful, or aromatic hops. It's just, I mean, why is it not a five? I don't know, because I'm, I feel guilty when I give too many fives. But, man, it's really good. I really, really enjoyed that beer. All right, Chris, it's time to bring the, the show to a close. But before we do that, I always want to give you an opportunity to raise a glass to someone. So who would you like to raise a glass to tonight? Well, just like you liked, just like you kind of hate to give out too many fives, I hate kind of copying your your toasts too. But I, I got to raise a glass to uh, Buck and Joe Buchanan for, the, for sending out the beers. Uh, yeah. Guys, these were good. So good. good. I, yeah. I can't wait to try the other two on our next episode. Um, and Denny, I do get to see all the, the emails that come through when, when folks, uh, help support the show through Patreon guys, cheers to you. Thank you so much for your help, uh, and the support of the show. I uh, just want to raise a glass to everybody who is helping support the show and kicking in a little bit, buying us a beer, a virtual beer. Uh, we do really appreciate it. Um, and Denny, again, not to steal your thunder, but you know, uh, who, who would you like to raise a glass to this evening? I'll, well, to our Patreon <laughs> toast, this, this episode is going out to our newest Patreon supporter, Eric Gronley. Thank you, Eric, for your support. We really appreciate, uh, not only just listening and interacting on our Facebook live, but, uh, all the, you know, and even a little bit of a, buying us a beer. We really appreciate that. And, and, uh, you know, our website cost did and hosting cost that we used to, to put the show out, it, it did come up this month. So we, we were able to use that Patreon money to to, uh, to go ahead and, and get the show uh, for another year. So we now have hosting paid for for another year. Thank you to our Patreon supporters. We really appreciate that. I also want to raise my glass to uh, Buck and Jill uh, Buchanan. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, sending the beer out. Um, I'm telling you, I'm going to rate that blonde a five cap rating. I really enjoyed that beer. This beer, very good as well. I don't, don't take my criticism. It's just, uh, I'm just criticizing what I, I have in my glass, but it's still a good beer. Um, but uh, thank you. And I look forward to those other two beers and core four brewing. I know there's two other, you know, there's two other people that are associated with core four too. I just forget their names. So I'm sorry. I can't, uh, uh mention them by name, but uh, cheers to everyone. And of course, being a former serviceman, I always want to raise my glass and thank all those who have served and who are currently serving in the U.S. military services, protecting our freedom. Thank you for your service. Please come back home safe with your families very soon. And Chris, how about you give a, a shout out or a toast to our sponsor? All right. At the forefront of the craft beer movement, Brewer Shirts was one of the first to create apparel that celebrates the art of brewing and the love of fine beer. Never too trendy, always comfortable, and offering affordable quality, they screen print their gear by hand in their studio using eco-friendly inks, materials, and processes. 
Visit their online store at brewershirts.com and use the coupon code TAPTHECRAFT2020 to receive 15% off full-priced items. And Denny, today I had a, someone come in as a new client <clears throat> for a consultation for our dog training business. She was wearing a Brewer Shirts t-shirt. Oh, nice. And I we got a, we had quite a conversation about it. <laughs> well, good, yeah. good. <laughs> All right. Well, you can find the beers and the links to the articles mentioned on the show in our show notes located on the show post at tapthecraft.com. And if you'd like to follow us on social media, I can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and untapped at loose screw. And Chris, how can our listeners follow you? Well, as you all know, you can never find me on Twitter at Chris underscore McKenzie82, but you can definitely find me on Untapped and Instagram at MCK1345. And be sure to go out and interact with us on all things social media uh, at Tap the Craft, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. We're <laughs> out there. Okay. All right. Well, it is last call and it's time to bring the show to a close. We want to thank you for downloading and listening. We ask you to please tell a friend and of course, subscribe on all, all the popular apps out there, whatever. I'm not going to name them all. You know what they are. <laughs> subscribe, tell your friends, like us, write a review, whatever, spread the word. And as a reminder, we release a new show every two weeks. Now go out there and spread the good word of craft beer. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.